Hi everyone, my name is Eleanor and I work for the London Fire Brigade Museum. Welcome to our history of the Great Fire of London. So how did it start? The Great Fire of London started on Sunday the 2nd of September 1666. It is called the Great Fire of London, not because it was great, as in good, but because it was so big. 13,000 houses burnt down, so lots of people lost their homes. The summer before the fire had been hot and dry. In a bakery on Pudding Lane, Thomas Farriner, baker to the king, was fast asleep. In his bakery, he had a big oven for baking bread, and one night his maid went to bed, but she hadn't put the fire out properly, and a tiny spark was still burning. This tiny spark was enough to spread and then set fire to the whole bakery. Thomas Farriner and his family managed to escape, all except the maid. The fire then spread to the next house, and then the next, and the next. The houses in 1666 were made of wood and their roofs were straw. Both burn really easily. The houses were built very close together, so close that you could lean out of your window and shake hands with the person on the other side of the road. This meant that the streets were very narrow. There was a strong wind that blew the flames from one house to the next. Now remember, this is a long time ago, before we had smoke alarms, so the churches in London rang their bells to warn people of the fire. Many people escaped in boats across the River Thames. Once they got to the other side, they had to live in tents with no food or clean clothes. How do you think these people felt? There was no fire brigade in 1666, so some people tried to put the fire out themselves. They used fire hooks to pull down straw from burning houses. They used water squirts to squirt water onto the fire. They filled buckets with water and passed these from person to person. This is because we didn't have water taps in our houses in 1666. Water had to be carried from the River Thames, wells or even ponds. The water was then thrown onto the fire. Buckets in 1666 were mostly made from leather. Leather comes from cows. Why do you think they used this material? Because it is strong and tough. It is waterproof, so the water would not leak out when it was being carried to the fire. It is also flexible. This means that it can be stretched into the shape of a bucket. We still use leather today to make things like our shoes, belts and bags. But this type of firefighting didn't work and the fire got bigger and bigger. It burnt down St Paul's Cathedral and spread closer and closer to the Tower of London. How did they stop the fire? The King, Charles II, and his brother, the Duke of York, visited the fire from a distance and decided to blow up houses to stop the fire spreading. They used gunpowder to blow up houses and this was called a fire break. This is because by blowing up a house, they made a gap or break in the houses that the fire couldn't jump across. This worked and after four days and four nights, the fire stopped. How do we know all about this fire as it happened so long ago? A man called Samuel Pepys, who lived at the time, wrote in his diary all about what happened. His diary has been kept safe and we can use it to learn all about the Great Fire of London. Did you know Samuel Pepys escaped from his house in London, but before he left, he buried his favourite cheese and wine. Why did he choose these things? They were very expensive. This means they cost a lot of money. They were expensive because they had come all the way from Italy. What happened afterwards? When the fire stopped, over 13,000 houses had burnt down. London had to be almost totally rebuilt and this took a long time. What material do you think people used to rebuild their houses? London had learned that wood was not a good material for their houses because it burnt easily. 
Houses after the Great Fire of London were made from bricks and stone to stop a fire like that from ever happening again. St Paul's Cathedral was rebuilt by Sir Christopher Wren and this took 30 years. People also thought it would be a good idea to have fire brigades after the Great Fire of London, but the first fire brigades worked in a very special way. To make sure the fire brigade would put a fire out, people had to pay money every year. This is called insurance. To show that someone had paid their money, they were given a fire mark to put on the front of their house. They looked a bit like this. There were lots of different fire brigades to choose from, so each fire brigade's fire mark had its own shape, picture and number. If a house didn't have a fire mark, then the fire wouldn't be put out. This wasn't very fair. So after a long time, almost 200 years, everything changed. We don't need fire marks on our houses anymore. And we now have one fire brigade in London, London Fire Brigade. Thank you for watching our video about the Great Fire of London. We really hope that you enjoyed it. Why don't you have a go designing your own fire mark? We have a template worksheet that you can download. Firstly, pick a shape. This could be a circle or a square, you can choose. Then pick a design to go in the middle. This could be equipment related to firefighting, like a ladder or a hose, or even an animal that's got something to do with fire, like a dragon or a phoenix. It doesn't have to be a real animal. Then pop a number across the bottom. This was a bit like a receipt to prove that someone had paid their money. Once you're happy with your work, if you'd like to share it with us, then please ask an adult to post it online with the hashtag LFB Great Fire of London so that we can admire it.